I'm Danielle. This is my DIY tiny house located in Sisters, Oregon. Well, I wanted to build a tiny house because I was paying a lot in rent and this was probably eight, nine years ago. So now it's like that problem has grown exponentially. So I'm really grateful that I was thinking about that then when rent prices were still pretty good. I had thought about wanting to buy a, a, a regular house, but I just didn't really have the funds. I wasn't sure. I was living in Austin at the time and I wasn't sure where I wanted to be long term. And now I know that buying a house isn't a lifelong investment necessarily, but at the time I, I wasn't sure I wanted to grow roots there. And I saw a documentary way back called Tiny, I believe, that was my first exposure to tiny houses. And once I saw that, I showed all my friends. My dream was that all my friends would build a tiny house and we'd all just live together on a commune. That hasn't quite happened, but I just was really inspired by that couple's journey. The build experience was just that, a big experience. I would say a lot of blood, sweat, and literal tears went into it. I didn't have any building experience going into it. My house is very DIY, I didn't use any plans. My uncle helped me, he's an artist. Uh, my uncle has been such an inspiration. He's taught me so much about building and he's influenced obviously my landscaping. He's always willing to help, so it's just been really great. My tiny house is about eight and a half by 20 feet, 200 square feet, including the loft. I live on my uncle's property. It's about three acres. I've been living in my house about six years now. My tiny house is on wheels, but it hasn't moved yet. I have built a really nice outdoor space in that time. This is my favorite feature of my yard. It's my pond. I love it because it brings in a lot of birds that maybe wouldn't visit me otherwise. I actually woke up one morning and looked out my window from my loft and there was a blue heron eating all my goldfish, but still it was beautiful. My uncle, whose property I live on, is an artist, so he's super creative with his outdoor spaces and he has a lot of ponds, so he was really my inspiration in building this and taught me how to do it. The treehouse is one of my newest additions to my yard. Another inspiration by my uncle. He's got a bunch in his yard too. But the idea with that was on the hot summer nights to have a nice cool place to sleep. This is another part of my house that I really enjoy. Um, one of the things I like about it is it's just a kind of a place for me to get dirt off my feet. It's a big problem walking into my house after being outside is bringing in a lot of dirt. So I feel like having the deck here really cuts down on that. I also love having a place to sit in the morning and having all these plants here. They're not all blooming yet, but in the summer, it's really beautiful to have all the, the greenery really close to my door. Another one of my favorite features of my house are these cedar shakes. I was inspired when I was at the Oregon coast by all the houses there that had cedar shakes as their siding and I knew I wanted to do that. So that was one of my splurges in building my house. All right, I'd love for you to come in and check it out. When I was building this house, I really wanted to focus on using reclaimed materials, not only because they're more affordable, but because it's more sustainable that way. So a lot of the design of my house was influenced by whatever materials I may have found. So one perfect example of that is this wall of windows. I found this window here, and my whole slope of my house is just based on the slope of that window. This is my living room. It's a super versatile space. It has changed many times since I've lived in my house with different furniture arrangements. One point there was just a chair and a desk. 
I love this space because of all the windows and natural light. I also love that my ceilings are really high in here. It makes this space feel a lot more open and airy and bigger than it is. A lot of tiny houses have different variations of furniture. I just have a love seat that somebody gave me for free. That's the only reason I have it. I don't, there's nothing special about it. I'll hopefully replace it at some point, but for now it's a good size for me and Frankie to watch a movie and snuggle up together. I have a little craft corner here. I've been really into beading lately. So um, this is just a little shelf that I found for $5 that probably won't be there forever, but it shows how versatile the space is. I have furniture that kind of moves in and out of this space. It, it's just a square basically that I can adjust however I'd like and depending on what I'm into at the time. One of my favorite features or pieces of furniture, super simple. It's just this old trunk that I found at a thrift store, super cheap. I put wheels on it. This thing can move out of the way if I wanna put out a yoga mat and move my TV and do a yoga video. Or most of the time it's more like my coffee table where I have my computer, I eat a lot of meals here, and then it also doubles as storage. A lot of my interior finishes were old reclaimed barn wood. I just found a Craigslist posting. Somebody was saving literally a pile of barn wood or selling it for $150. So I bought that and that this entire wall, which I love, it's kind of like an accent wall. I love how it follows the slope of the roof as well. I did a really good job keeping track of my spending in the beginning and then towards the end just kind of fell to the wayside, but I estimate I spent probably between 20 and 25K. There were a few really big purchases that jacked the price up. I brought a brand new trailer from Iron Eagle that was made specific for tiny houses. That was like $4,200. And then my siding was new. Um, that was probably like $600. There are some things that I did splurge on a little bit, but overall I'd say probably at least 50 to 75% of my building materials are used. So I was super thrifty. I went to the restore multiple times a week, just collected things. Like maybe I wasn't on that part of the build yet, but I just thought I'll use this down the line. Um, the floor, I just, I sent out a letter to my neighbors that I live on an, in an area where there's big lots and people have kind of stuff laying around. So I just asked if people had extra building materials that I could haul off for free. And so somebody contacted me, so I got all my floors for free and a lot of my siding, just people have piles of wood. It is parked on my uncle's property. So I do get kind of a family discount probably, <laughs> but I pay 300 a month. And for me, that includes internet, which isn't great. I don't only use it to stream movies sometimes. I don't have to work using internet. So it's not the best internet connection, but that includes internet, my electric and water. And I pay on the property, I pay for trash. So that's an extra 15. And then I buy my own propane, which fuels my heater and my hot water heater and my stove top. I think that my living situation is perfect because there's another person that lives in another tiny house on the property. There's my uncle that lives in the main house and then I have my tiny house and it's perfect because I have my own living space, but I don't feel isolated at all. If I ever need help with anything or just want to make dinner with somebody, there's always somebody around and it's a very like community feel. Thanks to our sponsor, Blinds.com. The more windows in a small space, the better, right? Well, give them some love. No matter whether you live in an RV, tiny house, or traditional home, Blinds.com can make affordable custom window treatments with the exact fit and functionality your windows need. They offer the largest online selection of window coverings, available in hundreds of colors. How rad is that? 
especially for those of us who love funky small spaces. Shopping for window treatments on blinds.com for our A-frame was a breeze. In our bedroom, we wanted blackout shades. And for our living room, we were looking for shades that could open and close from the top or bottom for maximum privacy and light control. No matter how unique or normal your windows are, Blinds.com expert designers are ready to help for free. Looking for easy, budget-friendly, custom window treatments for your home? See the link below to get started today on Blinds.com. On this side of the house, I have my kitchen. Uh, before, Right before the kitchen, this is my only source of heat. It's just this little propane heater that I found for like 150 bucks online. It was not used. This heater heats my space super well. It's such a small space, obviously. I have a fan that helps circulate the air. All right, this is my kitchen. All the cabinets are reclaimed. The sink I got at the ReStore, I got the propane heater from the ReStore, and then these cabinets were actually uh, wall-mounted kitchen cabinets that I found for like 15 bucks. And the, the top is actually old hardwood flooring that I also got for super cheap. So this trim on my cabinets was one of those things that was a really great idea in theory, but didn't hold out over time. So I had just like kind of glued up rocks and like pretty things and put grout in there. But over the years, it's just starting to fall off. The reason why I haven't fixed it is because eventually I'm going to want to redo this cabinet. I like how I like the look of it. I like the colors, but um, because it was a wall mounted cabinet, it actually doesn't go all the way back to the wall. So it is a lot of wasted space back there that I'd like to utilize. One way to really utilize your space in a small space like this is to hang things. So as you can see, my drying rack, it's hung over my sink. So when the water drips, it drips into my sink and it also gets stuff off my counter because obviously I don't have a lot of counter space. I also have just some like strainers and things that are just hung on nails. Anytime you can use any wall space, this isn't even a wall, but I'm able to store things there and it's not really even noticeable from that side. And also over here is my propane hot water heater, which sometimes you just need to be able to access. I'd like to um, make the part in front of my heater uh, detachable and on wheels so I can roll it out and access my hot water heater more easily. All right, on this side opposite to my kitchen is my, well, my refrigerator, which is an apartment size. It's a perfect size for one to two people. It was super affordable. Uh, that's something I also bought new online. And then this is my closet, I suppose. These are just drawers. I have like socks and that kind of stuff. And then this is my hanging space, which is maybe the world's smallest closet. <laughs> that is definitely one thing that I miss the most about living in a standard house is not having as much closet space, but it's actually not doing too bad right now. <laughs> I also have these shelves here. So these are kind of like act as drawers. They just have like some leggings and pants and other like overflow, like t-shirts and stuff like that. And then in this space, I just have my dirty clothes. I have Frankie's food, just a little extra storage, I'm trying to get as much storage out of the, under the stairs as possible. This is a cabinet also that I bought used and in here it just has shoes. All right, and back here I have my bathroom. This is one of my favorite light fixtures in the house. I love the industrial look to it. Here is one of my beading creations that I talked about earlier. Um, it's a little uh, sun catcher that I made with a, a little air plant. Over here I have a shower and then I have my little composting toilet over here. My floor is kind of a fun DIY project. It didn't turn out exactly like it looked on Pinterest, but it's actually a penny floor. So I collected many, many pennies I don't know how many, but a lot. And I actually just used Elmer's glue to glue them into place. And then I covered the whole top with a fiberglass resin. 
And then I opted to use a curtain instead of a door. It was just a way to save space and it was really simple. And I liked the little pop of color. When I decided to build a tiny house, I was in a kind of a big life transition. I had been taking a route to be a teacher and I had taught in the public schools for a couple years. But the job was just super stressful. I was working a lot of hours. I was bringing my work home. I just wasn't healthy. And so when I moved out here, I didn't really have a plan for what I was going to do. But I knew that if I was able to cut down my cost of living, that I wouldn't have to stress so much about what I did to make money. So I ended up finding a service industry job, which really changed the direction of my life. I met a ton of friends that way. It's a really active job. And then just, yeah, not having to work 40 hours a week anymore. Right now I'm working 20 to 25 hours. I'd like to add a little bit of work, but I have that flexibility living with such a low cost or at such a low cost. Um, so it's given me so much time to explore hobbies that I knew I wanted to do. I wasn't, I didn't have an active lifestyle before I moved here. I knew I wanted to do that. So my simple lifestyle looks like just being out in nature. That is my happy place, whether it's just walking Frankie or going camping or finding a hot spring, going on a hike, backpacking trip. Otherwise, like I like to just be at home. I'm really into crafting. Lately, I've been beading a lot. This is the first time that I've ever lived in my own space. It's all mine and it's an awesome feeling. I, I love, I'm grateful every day. Every time I wake up, I look and around, I'm like, I built this, like I, this is mine, I love it. It's such a big part of me now and just giving me time and space to really be grateful for my life and for just the simple pleasures like cooking dinner for myself or just hanging out with Frankie. Over here I have my staircase. I built a staircase instead of a, just using a ladder because I wanted my dog to be able to come up and snuggle with me in bed. Here I have a little bonus drawer, I guess. It just was a way to use all the space and this has a lot of just Frankie stuff in there. Gotta have the plants everywhere. Um, right here is a stained glass window that my grandmother made. I love the pop of color and in the morning it kind of casts different color shadows, which is awesome. I also have claimed a lot of materials from the, the land that I live on. So I use a lot of these juniper branches that I find, sand them down, um, put a little coat of clear seal on it. And so this is like a little handrail. I've made a little shelf. I just like the kind of natural look to it. This is my loft space. The bed is a, just a full size futon mattress that I found on Amazon that I've had been sleeping on for a long time. There is not quite enough space to put a full size mattress up here. So that's why I need to cut down on the depth of it. Definitely, if I were to design my house again and start over, I would have just bumped up the ceiling and done a dormer and had it be this high the whole, the whole way across. I wanted to put a skylight up here for the ventilation and it's really awesome to be able to fall asleep under the stars. I've actually seen shooting stars. I have a view of a tree so I can watch birds when I wake up. That's the plus side. The downside is obviously that I wake up with the sun. So I'm a morning person anyways, but if you're not, that might not be the best route for you. I think overall, like I love the idea of just smaller spaces, not necessarily a tiny house on wheels, just people like living with less. For me, I would rather have more property and a smaller house that I live in than a big house on a small lot. Like that aesthetically is more pleasing to me. I love spending time outside. And I just, I think everybody could learn to li just live with less and more simply and, it, and find it beneficial. And it, whether that means you're going from a 4,000 square foot house and downsizing to 1,500 square foot house, like that is huge for somebody. And I, I just hope that people continue to go into that direction. 
like living with less, not consuming as much, especially with climate change. And, you know, we're seeing the effects in Central Oregon with all the wildfires. And I hope that that's really starting to open people's eyes about different, like alternative ways to live. I talk to people in the area who are just struggling finding housing. They're paying, you know, insane amounts of money for rent. And I, yeah, all I want to say is I'm so grateful that I have this, that I have the situation, the housing situation that I have. I, when COVID hit and people, you know, went on unemployment and were unsure if they could pay their rent, I just felt so much gratitude that I have this safe, comfortable place to live. And it's huge. And I hope, that's my hope for our society is that everybody can have like, in whatever it looks like, like a safe, comfortable place to live. I mean, it's everything. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.